Welcome to part 2. As I was saying, Carl Bass is preying on an environment where mortgages are being created by banks, which is a creation of credit money, and then they are trading it hundreds of times over between themselves, which of course the person who got the loan in the first place has no control over. Um, he is then speculating that those banks will default on their payments because at the same time he's creating fear through that the euro will fall down. But he's a neocon, he has political reasons for doing that. Okay? But on the other side he has a a, a mercenary streak in him that he is waiting for those banks to default between each other and thus eventually that pro that process will lead back to the person who was originally given the loan, which as Steve Keane has said, um is a wholly unfair way of um, doing things because there is a, a you've got a hundred lawyers and a hundred economists and financial accountants creating these mortgage agreements, which is completely unfair to the person who might who's never been educated to understand that through the public school and private school systems, you know, um, and so. Carl Bass is then going to claim insurance, and this is very important, he's claiming insurance on your mortgage, on your house, when you're being chucked out of your house by the banks as the banks reclaim it, he's claiming the mortgage on the fact that you your credit defaulted and was swapped by the banks between each other. So he's claiming insurance on something he doesn't even own. And this is the crucial point to to be made about the European International Trans Transaction Tax. That was designed to make every time someone shorted the market, that's what he's doing, by putting a bet that the that banks would default, or thus creating a situation where a bank will default. Um, and so, so an irrational expectations, a sort of herd mentality of investors being preyed on by speculators okay so they're put by doing a tax on these international transactions between each other they're putting the risk back on the speculator so therefore he won't engage in those kind of trades because and therefore he won't claim insurance on stuff he doesn't own there's also another problem the problem of trading of between say if you're Trading a good between or service between Amazon Co. U, UK and Amazon US, you're not trading directly. You're going through a merchant bank. The merchant bank organises the trade, and it, that is an international financial transaction. So, your your the amount of money you're actually paying for a good or service, the merchant bank is taking their cut, which is untaxed and unregulated. So therefore you don't actually know a true price and price is not a true signal of, of what is going on. As I said before, there's three different kinds of money. There is money as a unit of value, which nobody buddy ever really knows. Um, I mean, you could level this accusation at the euro itself, um, although it's backed by gold, uh, silver and many different other commodities and services in a basket of goods but money at any one time cannot be known in its true value because we don't know how many resources that and and so and natural services and natural services of course are not priced they're created by ecosystems uh, and and by natural processes we don't know that within the context of our ability to um, get those resources and use those resources their utility yeah um, because we don't know how quickly technology is changing so therefore we cannot predict at any one time the true value of money so you've had credit money created which is just banks creating money out of thin air through the uh, fractional reserve banking system um, which I've, I've talked about in part one um, and a bank is anyone who lends uh, short and invests long. 
So you're actually you've got speculators making themselves into into banks, you know. Many, many different people are becoming banks. But yet the crucial factor is that when a central bank like the Bank of England creates money based on economic output and a basket of goods or the or the ECB, they're not allowing people who are citizens to get the money at the same base rate that the banks are. If they did that then there would be not only liberty and equality, but the banks would themselves either have to become cooperatives like the cooperative bank has, which has just taken over Lloyd's, or they they will not um, be able to function. You know, they wouldn't make money. Okay? Um, now, you, there's all different things about blaming the Federal Reserve, which, of course, the, the Federal Reserve has acted like a rogue central bank for many, many years since it started. But you can't level that at the ECB. The ECB, for instance, has created a situation where there's only 2% inflation each year. So you, wages are actually, for the most part, staying above inflation. Uh, they're not robbing people's money in that way. Um, and of course the reason why the Germans traditionally have been against the ECB's involvement is because the ECB, headed by Mario Draghi, who's of course in charge of the Bank of uh, Italy or one of the, under Berlusconi, which of course created a lot of inflation, um, and the actual amount of inflation in Greece and Italy and Spain, although Spain has a, did have a property bubble itself created by inflation, um, is mostly that the distinction between private debt of individuals and government debt and also the bank's debt has all been put into one lump because, of course, the citizens are... The bank, central bank is the lender of last resort in Greece and in other countries throughout Europe and America, and the citizen is the one who takes the liability. And so most of Greece and Italy's debt is actually bank-held debt which may be debt that the government has given to them or they've lended to the United States and the United States has not paid them back. You know, so We're dealing with very, very serious issues here. Okay, The United States, um, or that was reported on RT, so take this with, you, know, you could take this with a pinch of salt, but the, the Americans were even thinking about seizing the uh, gold reserves of Germany, which are held, or were held, a couple of years ago in the New York Reserve Bank. You know, whether the United States has any gold or not, I mean, that is a hostile, aggressive act against the EU. And we're supposed to be an ally of the United States, you know. Um, also, one of the um, federal uh, investigative uh, uh, forensic accountants um, who was investigating Freddie May and Fannie, Fannie Mac, he, who was subpoenaed by Congress to see to a committee that would deal with whether Hank Paulson knew about insider trading and those has ended up dead. She had thousands of um, documents. So, you know, things are going on outside. Whether that was murder or natural causes, no, no one's, no one's um, yet been able to prove. But things are going on. People are moving against the American government and also the European government. And it's being done for both ideological reasons in the case of the um, NWO and also commercial reasons for in the case of Carl Bass and because of private political reasons um, because of David in David Cameron's case. He's got 83 bank, backbenchers who should really be belonging to UKIP, which is, of course, a UK, uh, an NWO... Um, controlled party like B the BNP and EDL is but um, th he's got those back conservative backed benches and their 85 votes have somehow undid the 700 million people who, are, who would like to have a vote with the EU progressing towards a federal state and themselves having a right to um, elect a president a EU, EU president okay so um, I'll explain more about the history of the euro in part three.